welcome everyone to this, the uh, regular meeting of council on Monday, June the 26th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers, council senior staff. We welcome all of you that are in the gallery as well as online. If I could ask you to stand for the national anthem, please. Thank you. The municipality of Central Elgin acknowledges that it is located on the land of the McKee Treaty that was signed by the Wyandotte and by Ashinaabe nations, including ancestors of Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, is also the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Adirondack, Adirondack, and Mississauga Nation. These First Nations continue to provide ongoing stewardship of the land and waters in the municipality of Central Elgin. Council, does anyone have a disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? Councillor Alpin. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, uh, I would like to declare interest in uh, notice of motion number two regarding organi organizational review. Uh, that is because my spouse works for the municipality. Thank you. Oh, I would like to do the same as Councillor Halpin. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Okay, adoption of minutes. Questions or comments about the, of the minutes, folks? Seeing none, if I get a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Halpin, Deputy Mayor Noble. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Halpin, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that the minutes of the regular meeting of council dated June 12th, 2023, and the dangerous dog hearing dated June 16th, 2023, be adopted. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Under items received for information, we have two, one from the County of Elgin with respect to the Joint Annual Accessibility Status Report and Local Municipal Partners Joint Multi-Year Accessibility Plan. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, if I get a mover and a seconder. Councillor Connors, Councillor Halpin. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Connors, seconded by Councillor Halpin, that correspondence items number one and two be received for information and filed. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moving quickly on to reports. Central Elgin Planning Office, CEP 3323. Any questions or comments from council? CEP 3423, an application to amend the municipality of Central Elgin official plan in the township of Yarmouth regarding 5277 Quaker Road. Okay, we're gonna back up one. Okay, so CEP 3323, I have a mover and I have a seconder. Mover and a seconder. Councillor Watson, Deputy Mayor Noble. 
Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Watson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that report CEP 3323 be received for information and that direction be given by Council to prepare a site-specific draft amendment to the Township of Yarmouth bylaw for the proposed residential use on lands located at 9441 Spring Water Road, which may be legally described as Concession 9, south part of Lot 28, Registered Plan 11 R 9164 Part 1, Municipality of Central Elgin, and further that a date for a public meeting be established in accordance with Ontario Regulation 54506 as amended. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. CEP 3423, now re regarding 5277 Quaker Road. Questions or comments from Council, please. Councillor Halpin. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Sloan. Um, we read this report, of course, this weekend, and then it was today that we received further correspondence about it. Has the staff had an opportunity to read in response to that correspondence? Thanks, Councillor Halpin. Staff, want to comment, please? Through you, Mr. Graves. That the correspondence came late this afternoon, so I don't know that it's been fully vetted. Uh, I will say, though, as part of the process that um, as with all planning applications, this would have gone through its normal process. We had a public meeting and there's an opportunity. I believe the applicants were in attendance at that public meeting with their planner and presented the information. Um, so uh, I don't know uh, how council wants to manage a letter at this stage in the process. Um, I would just say that depending on where council went with the application, um, if the council supported uh, staff's position on it, then um, the op the uh, applicants have the opportunity to go to the land tribunal, and that's where they would take a letter like this. But that's up to council in terms of how you wish to manage this late correspondence. Um, I have a question about this file, Mr. McClure. Is the main issue is it is it parking, or is it the fact that they don't have um, uh, access to to like a sewer system? Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Sloan. Uh, it's actually both uh, the main issue, or I guess one of the main issues is the fact that they haven't been able to do demonstrate that they can meet the servicing requirements of the provincial policy statement, the county's official plan or the municipality's official plan. Uh, the options that they've put forward uh, have been disputed or I guess uh, disagreed upon by the province and uh, the county was priv privy to that. Uh, and uh, the same goes with the, uh, the amount of parking uh, they're providing a parking uh, arrangement that would uh, require uh, ride sharing uh, those types of uses, or sorry, uh, I guess transportation options, which is a concern in this uh, specific location that they can't provide enough uh, sufficient parking on the property, especially when you're looking at uh, the potential for other uh, types of events uh, that could occur on the site based on the proposed zoning. <laughs> With respect to the parking, they they haven't they haven't come to the agreement. You haven't come to any agreement on the number of spots. And and again, that's part of the the process. This is what they uh, provided to us based on the uh, again the the uses that they've they've provided. Nothing else has been uh, advanced based on that. Uh, um, again, the the ride sharing options. I know they had provided. Uh, options for adjacent parcels of land and, and uh, uh, things in the past through the, the pro process, but that wasn't something that staff supported through the consultation. The reason I ask is I'm just checking my notes here. You have a line in there which says, um, you know, staff is generally supportive. We have an agritourism business that's trying to establish a, a place. I drove through it just to take a look on the weekend. There wasn't anyone there if they have cameras. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I just wanted to, you know, if you read through the notes, I guess the first thing that came to my mind was if we have things like churches that don't have the, the proper sanitation or, or sorry, that, that aren't hooked up, that might be having an event or we have food trucks that are going to have an event as we just allowed for one. Is it the, is it the frequency of the events that they're having? That's because the sole reason for the business stands as being a, a, a reception type place. So those were my questions. Um, I know it's only in the summer. It used to be, you know, winter weed, and they used to have the occasional um, endeavor there. For me, Mr. McClure, I'm, I'm looking to, 
your, uh, to ensure that, you know, an agribusiness like this, which brings people to the area, shows off the wonderful natural resources we have, um, we're doing what we can to work with them. And uh, I'm gonna to defer to Councillor Halpin because it's in her ward. And then you, Mr. McClure, thank you. Thank you, through you, Mayor Sloan. Uh, that is part of why I wanted to know about uh, the email was because ideologically I'm supported, supportive of a lot of what's going on there. And I do think it's of benefit to our community. Um, my concern with the letter and why I was curious about whether staff had seen it was that I felt that the lawyer had given responses that were worth consideration to many issues. And the one that was not addressed that I really couldn't get past was that there must be continuous running water, which means I don't think that bringing a supply possibly can meet that because you don't have that continuity. And the Municipal Act does not allow us to supersede Ontario regulations. So I believe that no matter how much I like the idea of the project, it might be that we don't have the right to move to support it. Thank you. And just before Mr. McClure, there seemed to be a house on the property. Would it have running water? Just a question, Mr. McClure. Uh, my understanding is that the house has a well, but again, it comes down to the principle of land use and having the sufficient services on the site to accommodate that use. I do agree. And I believe the, the policies are supportive and staff is supportive in principle. Of the, of the agri-tourism uses. We have been in support of it in the past. A perfect example being the legitimization of the uh, K to Van uh, venue, which does have uh, uh, private, uh, sorry, has on-site servicing to deal with the events that occur on the site. Um, it would be, uh, again, going back to kind of uh, the first principles and that of any sort of uh, use on property, it's to be serviced to an appropriate standard to uh, uh, accommodate that use. And that would go back to, again, some of the uh, previous comments in my, in my report where the legislation for the Health Promotion and Safety Act does allow for um, specific exceptions to rules, like when you're dealing with a, uh, in a national plowing match or a fair, uh, again, those are one-time events that may occur uh, infrequently on property where the expectation isn't to, to have uh, those types of services because it's not an ongoing business on the property. In this instance, the, the operator is looking to establish a business through zoning, through site plan um, and do it in perpetuity, which goes back to why the, uh, the legislation and the policies are written in such a way to ensure that the use itself has the ability to accommodate the, the range of uses and provide health and safety of, of its, uh, of, uh, I guess the individuals that are frequenting those events. Thank you. So they do have a well, so they have running water. Um, we have a lot of constituents that have wells and get their running water from it. At least I think that's how it works. If they are in a, in a business situation, do they have to have the well tested? Is that how things work? Mr. Perrin, please. Uh, if it is a business situation, then yes, they would have to comply with the Safe Drinking Water Act, which had to be tested. So uh, just to, to uh, maybe back up some of the comments that Mr. McClure made. So Again, staff are not uh, concerned with the type of use. What we're concerned with is that at this point, they have not demonstrated that they have adequate water supply. It, it, you know, the, for a residential home, uh, you could get away with three gallons a minute. That's a lot different type of consumption if you had compared to a banquet facility where you have a wedding uh, going on where you could have 250 people on site. The demand is, is much different. So on the potable water supply, we just want them to demonstrate that they have adequate water supply. On the, on the other end of the spectrum, on the wastewater side, they're proposing that they're gonna have a banquet facility, that's really what this is, uh, with no septic system, no plumbing. We're gonna bring in washroom trailers uh, on, a, on a regular basis and we get circulated on uh, special occasion permit licenses for this property, uh, regardless that they don't comply to zoning, they're still running events on a weekly basis. So, or on a very regular basis. So what we're saying is that if you're going to have that type of venue, then put in a proper, proper septic system, which is required under the provincial policy statement for that type of use. So, um, and 
our official plan complies with the provincial policy statement. So if you're going to do that, that type of use, then put in the proper sanitation system to support that type of use rather than depend on washer and trailers. Thank you, Mr. Perrin. Just is the councillor helping should you go ahead, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, um, having heard that they do have a well for the residents, uh, is that meant to be made available for use by service groups and or by caterers and so forth that are going to be there? Uh, I guess through you, Mayor Sloan, to Councillor Halpin. Um, that's my understanding through the presentation that was uh, by their uh, the planners, uh, I guess the applicant's agent, uh, that their autonomous water supply was essentially a, a giant tank that they were going to be filling up to bring out to locations for caterers and individuals to, to use. Supplementary. Thank you, supplementary. So, um, so they do have water on site, but they're not planning to offer the use of the well to those caterers. They're planning to have a tank for them. Sure, Mr. McCourt, please. And, and again, I can't speak to spe the specifics of, of that, but I think it goes back to some of the questions that were, or comments that are made by Mr. Perrin in, in that, is that ultimately, the, the capacity, how things are going to be utilized they, is still unclear with respect to the water. Definitely know, uh, understand that there's a, a lack of a, a septic system being proposed uh, on the property uh, to, to address the, the servicing concerns. Um, but, and again, it goes back to notwithstanding there is a well on the property. And if they were to bring piping out to the, I guess the shed or that, that they're proposing to use, or we're proposing to use for the catering services, it goes back to the, the quantity and quality of water for the, for the business use. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? If I get a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Halpin. How about a seconder? Deputy Mayor Noble. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Halpin, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that report CE3423 be received for information and that council refuse the proposed amendment to the municipality of Central Elgin official plan and the township of Yarmouth bylaw number 1998, as they are inconsistent with the provincial policy statement, the county of Elgin official plan and the municipality of Central Elgin official plan. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. CAO report 1723. Mr. Graves, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. So uh, you have in front of you a return uh, policy. Um, at the last time this was in front of council, council asked that we have it to review by a third party. That has uh, now been done. We appreciate the uh, the efforts of uh, individuals who have taken a look at the policy and uh, they're identified in the report and it's back in front of council for its uh, consideration this evening. Questions or comments? Oh, Councillor Graham. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'm with regards to the consideration or the review by the consultant, I believe there were three areas that we had voted on and carried that um, any consultant have a Ministry of Labor, psychological health background, as well as uh, uh, HR background. And from what I have seen with the people that were retained or the consultants, that was not the case. Because so I don't see ever, anyone with the Ministry of Labor background on the documentation as well. I'm concerned, again, that it doesn't notice council on a lot of it. It's talking about staff, but not a lot of council, which was the uh, original concerns that we had brought up. Mr. Graves, please. Thank you, Councillor Graham. Thank you. Uh, I think council, uh, staff are very comfortable with the qualifications of the uh, individuals who looked at this from, from the suite of individuals they had in their office, uh, expertise that they had in, in their office. And I believe there was comment back from them that um, really identified that, uh, you know, council needs to support a policy uh, such as this. It's, it's a tool basically for staff, council's um, um, uh, opportunities fall within its code of conduct in terms of how it relates with each other. But uh, this would be a corporate policy that needs to be supported by all levels of uh, the organization. Thank you, Mr. Graves. Questions or comments? Councillor Halpin, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan. Um, I do think it's important to note that this tool is for staff and therefore does predominantly speak to staff 
And in every definition that you look ahead, both within and outside of the municipality, we as members of council are not staff. So I don't feel that there is any failing here in predominantly naming staff and sort of sidelining the mention of council here. We do have our code of conduct. We do have other things that protect us and outline what our responsibilities are. But I mean, we don't have benefits. We don't have sick days. We don't have supervisors. We don't have uh, scheduled times that were required to be in the building. We like There's nothing that we have that makes us in any way like staff, except for the fact that we are paid by the municipality once a month. That's, we are not, it's written everywhere that the thing is described and I don't understand why we would fail to support something so important for our community, just because it doesn't talk enough about us. Um, <laughs> thank you. Questions or comments? Seeing none. Can I get a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Watson. Councillor Halpin. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Watson, seconded by Councillor Halpin, that report CAO 1723 regarding psychological health and safety policy be received for information and that staff be directed to implement the psychological health and safety policy and the accompanying central Elgin workplace mental health and well-being handbook. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion fails. Director of Infrastructure and Community Services. Waste, wastewater financial plans, ICS 1423. Mr. Brooks, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, this report has to do with the uh, drinking water licenses uh, for both the Central Elgin distribution system as well as the Belmont distribution system. Uh, both systems um, have drinking water licenses, which are set to expire in July of 2024. Uh, through recent communication with the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, uh, it's been revealed that the municipality's uh, application for the renewal of the drinking water licenses is due on January 21st of 2024. In order to renew these uh, drinking water licenses, uh, a financial plan must be prepared for the water system. Um, and it's, it's crucial that, uh, you know, we comply um, uh, as per Ontario regulation 453.07. Uh, it should be noted that uh, staff are proposing the preparation of a financial plan for both the water and wastewater systems. The water system is mandated at this point in time though, wastewater system is not mandated, but is recommended to be included in the system as they're both tied very closely together. Uh, staff had originally proposed this financial plan uh, to be included in the 2024 budget, but in light of the application deadline, staff would recommend that uh, council pr proceed uh, with the preparation of the financial plan immediately. Um, based on the assessment, uh, staff would anticipate uh, the cost of the financial plan to be in the neighborhood of around fifty thousand uh, dollars, and uh, staff would also propose that uh, this cost be borrowed from the twenty twenty three capital uh, budget and paid back through the twenty twenty four capital budget. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Questions and comments from council, please, Councillor Graham. Through you, Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering if we have a uh, financial or we're developing a financial plan and we have a financial finance team with our treasurer and the people that work under her, why we need an outside consultant to do that. Thank you, Councillor Graham. Mr. Brooks. Uh, staff would recommend uh, um, an outside consultant who specializes in the preparation of financial plans. Uh, the majority of the municipalities in Ontario do um, procure this service, and there are only two or three of them that do provide the service, and they have the necessary expertise in uh, developing the plans. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. Some municipalities do do it themselves, it sounds like. 
I do believe that uh, there have been some municipalities who have prepared their own um, and they may have had them peer reviewed by one of these consultants, but uh, I am aware that uh, there are very few municipalities who have uh, done their own. Perfect, thanks, Mr. Brooks. Councillor Graham, did you have a follow-up question? That was my question. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Noble. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Brooks, if, if we did a bulk of it in-house and then had it peer reviewed, is that an option that would save us some money? Mr. Brooks, please. Uh, I don't have the expertise or the uh, staff complement to prepare a financial plan in the infrastructure and community services uh, department. I'd have to defer to the director of finance as to whether she, her department had the ability to, to uh, help. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. Mr. Gu Ms. Gupta Reed, did you wish to comment, please? Absolutely, through you, Mayor um, Sloan. We haven't done that before, but absolutely we can take a stab at it. And then um, depending upon where it goes, uh, we can come back and let you know whether it's doable or not. Because my staff is also, we have CPAs, we have everything, but uh, because it's water and wastewater, so I don't believe any of us have that expertise per se, but we can definitely take a stab at it. Thank you very much, Ms. Gupta Harit. Mr. Brooks, please. Staff would make a recommendation that we do procure the service based on the type timelines that we have to turn this around. We don't want to be in a position where, you know, we've made an effort to complete the financial plan, but then we have to go back out and procure services to finish it. We must have this plan endorsed by council for that January 21st uh, deadline date. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Mr. B uh, Councilor Bachman, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Brooks, what would the ramifications be? Well, the Safe Drinking Water Act requires the preparation of the financial plan for the application. If we're unable to provide that, I'd need legal advice as to what the um, penalties might be. There could be um, potential fines as well as, um, you know, um, increased oversight from uh, the Ministry of Environment. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Why was it on the 2024 originally? Thank you. Uh, staff uh, believed with the approval of the 2024 budget in the fall of uh, 2023, we would have uh, enough time to complete the plan uh, for the um, uh, uh, for the license renewal in late July. Um, through an internal audit and communication with MECP, as I mentioned before, um, it came to light that the application is due six months in advance of that renewal. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Councillor, I think Councillor Halpin and then Councillor Watson, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan. Is this an annual financial plan or when is the next one due after this? Mr. Brooks. The drinking water license uh, requires renewal every five years. So, um, we would do one for the 2024 budget year to renew in 2024. Another one wouldn't be required till 2028, 2029. Councilor Halpin, Councilor Watson, please. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Brooks. Almost the same question. Well, that was the first part of mine. But uh, the second part was um, when we've done it before, Who's re have we had someone outside do our reports before? Is that what we've done before? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Brooks. Uh, yeah, we've uh, the last uh, consultant that did did it was Watson and Associates back in. They did a full financial plan back in 2018, um, and uh, to my knowledge, it's always been done through a consultant. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. Councillor Graham, please. And through you, Mr. Uh, Mayor, um, Mr. Brooks, how long did it take when you had it done previously? I, I wasn't involved in the preparation of the financial plan, so I can't answer that question. Follow up, Councillor Graham. Um, Archana, how long do you think it, or do you think that you would be able to complete this, you and your team, within the next six months? So you, Mr. Mayor, I have no clue about it, like what this financial plans look like. Um, I have been only with Municipal Corporation for two years. It was never done in my presence. So I have to look at it and then answer the question. I don't know what it entails. So I'm unable to answer that question at this point. 
Thank you. Follow up, Councillor Graham, please. Uh, I'm just wondering if if um, it would be we would be better served financially if we gave Miss uh, Gupta Hari uh, a chance to take a look at it and then report back to Council in early July whether she feels comfortable doing it, her and her team. Okay, thank you. Councillor Graham, Councillor Bachman. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, just a statement. Um, the services we provide and the protection to the people of Central Elgin, water is one of those necessary and mandatory requirements I feel that should not be skipped or chinsed out on, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, if this requires a consultant to prepare and meet the requirements of the ministry to have proper safe drinking water and the license needs to be renewed, then let's get this done for the safety and possibly for the ramifications that it's going to cause us down the line. As Mr. Brooks outlined, the ramifications can be long range based on a few dollars. I think this is money well spent. <laughs> Thank you. We're talking about the finance here, Nira, not the actual water, folks. Just to remind, Councillor Halpin, please. Thank you, through you, Mayor Sloan. Um, I am inclined to agree with Councillor Bachman, but I do have a question about uh, the possibilities for motion here. Um, probably best for Mr. Graves. So through you to Mr. Graves. Um, it being outside of our term of council that this is next done, is it within the scope of our vote here to direct for this to be done through a consultant right now and for staff to anticipate doing this in-house next time. Mr. Graves, please. Uh, just to restate what I think, so that this this uh, study would go beyond its term. That's the first part of your question, right? So that would be normal course for a municipality to have uh, that sort of look ahead. Uh, very, very normal on that side. So. Thank you. Questions or comments from council? Deputy Mayor, oh, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Graham, please. Uh, just a question through you or to you, Mr. Chairs. Uh, when is our our next potential meeting, or could we hold a special meeting to discuss this with Mr. Gupta Harid? I want to have as much confidence in our staff as possible, um, and I feel like you know after working with Archana for the last few years that I would have the confidence in her that she would be able to, her and her team would be able to deliver this financial plan. So. I mean, if we're going to be meeting again, or we could be meeting again in two weeks, and then at that point, she could advise us if she, her and her staff feel comfortable moving forward with it. Very good. Um, we can call special meetings. Delaney, when's the next our meeting? Our next scheduled meeting is in July. Mayor Sloan, the next regular scheduled meeting of council is July 17th. Okay, so we're still six months or seven months from now out from the date. Do you want to put a motion forward for that, Councillor Graham? I do. I would like to put a motion that we uh, give Ms. Gupta Reed the opportunity with her team to take a look at the financial plan, potentially speak to the other municipalities that do their own, and then uh, report back to Council so we can make a determination at that point. Do I have a seconder for the motion? Deputy Mayor Noble. Mr. Mayor, can I have a word, please? Ms. Gupta Hari? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So what I would do is I'll spend, uh, I'm actually out for training for the next couple of days, but as soon as I'm back, I'll definitely look at what was done in 2018. And after that, I'll certainly send an email or something like that back to council, letting my opinion know whether it's doable in-house or not, if that is acceptable to everybody. Because I don't want to waste time for everyone and Jeff kind of struggling with timelines. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Gupta Reed. Ms. Leach. 
Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Graham, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of Central Elgin direct administration of the Finance Department to review the undertaking of a financial plan for the water and wastewater systems as per Ontario Regulation 45307, and that staff report back to Council as soon as possible. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. ICS 1623, the 7th Avenue drain petition. Um, any presentation on this or comments or questions from staff? Mr. Brooks, please. Uh, <clears throat> so this has to do with the 7th Ave drain petition. Uh, staff have signed a petition for drainage on 7th Avenue in front of where the new school is being proposed in Belmont. Uh, the school has already petitioned and requires the municipality to sign the petition as well to make it valid as per the requirements of the Ontario Drainage Act, which requires the petitioners, um, um, the total petitioners land to encompass at least 60% of the area requiring drainage. Um, with council approval staff, we move forward with Spreet and Associates to prepare a report. Um, regardless of the uh, school's need for drainage, the municipality also requires drainage on 7th Ave. So while I mentioned the petition isn't valid uh, for the school, only the municipality would be uh, petitioning regardless of the school. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. I had a question about that too, and it said the costs to construct a drain will be addressed to the landowners. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, the the benefit and outlet would be um, assessed uh, through the drainage report by the drainage engineer. Thank you. Council, any questions or comments? Councillor oh, Councilor Watson. Okay, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, sometimes when the municipal drain goes in, there's like grants for it. So would we see any grants uh, coming for this one at all to Mr. Brooks? Thank you, Mr. Councillor Watson. Mr. Brooks, please. Uh, the agricultural um, owners of land within the watershed would be eligible for the OMAFRA grant, which I believe, believe it's one third of the total cost. And that applies only to agricultural properties, uh, municipal properties, as well as commercial industrial wouldn't receive any, any grants. Did I see your hand, Deputy Mayor Noble? No. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Over in a seconder, please. Councillor Bachman, Councillor Halpin. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Bogman, seconded by Councillor Halpin, that report ICS 1623 regarding the 7th Avenue drain petition be received for information that the council and that the Council of the Municipality of Central Elgin appoint Brandon Widner, PN of Spreed Associates Limited to continue preparing a report under Section 4 of the Drainage Act for a new municipal drain for 7th Avenue, in addition to the Thames Valley District School Board petition. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. ICS 1823, Edward Street Stairs and the Public Consultation. Mr. Brooks. Apologies, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> I, I slashed out my thing here. Um, ICS 1723, Drinking Water Quality Management System. Mr. Uh, Brooks. Through you, Mr. Mayor, this report uh, concerns the Drinking Water Quality Management System, often referred to as the DWQMS system, the operational plans and policy. Um, the system ensures the safety of our drinking water through um, a multi-barrier approach as well as risk assessments. Um, the report includes the operational plans for the Belmont water system, the Central Elgin water system, as well as the Central Elgin water distribution system that resides in the St. Thomas suburban area. Um, these plans, along with their operating uh, procedures, are available for your review on the Civic Web or iCompass. Um, the full plans, uh, there's some sensitive material in those plans, so we can't uh, include those full plans on the um, council agenda. Uh, element three of the operational plans uh, requires a re-endorsement uh, when there is a change in council. As the owners of the public water system, council bears the responsibility for meeting all public and regulatory obligations related to the supply of drinking water. 
Uh, while council may designate managers or operators for day-to-day -day operations, the ultimate responsibility for providing safe drinking water lies with council. Staff recommends that council reaffirm its commitment to the obligations under the Safe Drinking Water Act by approving the drinking water quality management operational plans and policy attached to this report. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. Questions or comments from council? Over in a seconder then, please, Councillor Halpin and Councillor Bachman. Thank you. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Halpin, seconded by Councillor Bogman, that report ICS 1723 regarding drinking water quality management system, operational plan and policy, Belmont water system, Central Elgin water system, and Central Elgin water distribution system, St. Thomas suburban area, be received for information. And the Council of the Municipality of Central Elgin approve the drinking water quality management system operational plan and policy for the Belmont water system and the Central Elgin water system operated by the Municipality of Central Elgin. And furthermore, that Council of the Municipality of Central Elgin approve the drinking water quality management system operational plan and policy for the Municipality of Central Elgin water distribution system, St. Thomas suburban area operated by the City of St. Thomas. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Now we're on to Edward Street Squares, Edward Street Stairs, ICS 1823. I've read the report. Did you want to speak to it, Mr. Brooks? Sure. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, MTE Consultants is uh, winding down the uh, design on the uh, Edward Street Stairs. There's a few minor um, things to clean up on their design drawings. Uh, as such, uh, staff is uh, seeking uh, council direction on which form of public engagement it wishes to pursue here. Um, I've uh, listed out three options that uh, council could consider. Very good, thanks. Has council had a chance to take a look and any questions or comments for Mr. Brooks, please. Councillor Halvin, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, I believe that I uh, saw in the report that you feel that the best option is to go through Let's Talk Central Elgin. Uh, what were the reasons for that? Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Um, staff believe this would be the best form of uh, engagement as it allows um, you know communication back and forth with staff. Uh, from staff's perspective, at least, it seems that uh, all interested parties are following this project very closely and are well aware of what's happening. Um, any presentation that staff would give would be very short. I think most people have already seen the presentation, um, and this would be um, give residents the ability to to uh, communicate back and forth with staff as well. They're always welcome to call council as well. So, uh, with that form of uh, public engagement, staff could uh, provide a summary to council once that uh, um, public consultation is closed. Thank you, Councillor Graham. Please. I don't think that the number one recommendation is the way to go. I think that because it is such a controversial issue that we've been going back and forth with and so many pieces of correspondence that we need to either have an open house or a presentation by staff so that we can uh, welcome the public in to ask questions at the time. Um, I think that the one number one option is not would not be considered acceptable. I don't consider it acceptable, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the public wouldn't as well. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Deputy Mayor Noble, please. I uh, I feel a lot of folks are are following this closely, and uh, um, a public public meeting would be more beneficial. As some most are very passionate about it, one way or another. Any other councillors wish to comment? Looked at the three options. Thanks, Buzzy. Councillor Halpin. May I move that we go with the let's talk option? Sure, do you have a seconder? Councillor Bachman, thank you. Mayor Sloan, the vote. Pardon me, Councillor Halpin. Uh, I just realized that in discussion, I hadn't really brought this up, but um, 
it, before we vote, I just wanted to state that my reason for thinking that there might be benefit in the let's talk option is that most times that we've filled the audience chamber, uh, it's been an, very one-sided in terms of what the general community feeling is. And I'm concerned that there are a lot of people involved in this who like one another as neighbors, but have very strong and opposing feelings. And it might be easier for some of them to express themselves digitally and in one-on-one -on -one conversations with staff rather than having to create bad blood. Thanks, Councillor Halpin. My concern is, is that I think the, the mayor said there'd be a public meeting. So I'm, that's, that's my understanding and that's just wanted to give you my background, but I appreciate it. Thank you. And through you, that had initially been my consideration and it was over the course of these several months that I've realized where that could become painful. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Bachman, please. Um, just to add some further comment to this. Um, obviously, I don't know how the rest of you have communicated with a lot of the people, but I've received a few phone calls in Belmont about, about this issue from some, some residents. And uh, the concern I have um, in the public forum is that those that are comfortable in that public forum setting are going to be more accustomed to their presentation techniques as opposed to those that would feel better sitting in front of a computer and typing out their comments. They don't feel, I'm not going to say they are intimidated or not intimidated, but I think their, their um, comfort level would be um, better served through the let's talk. Uh, I think you're going to get positions on both sides and it gives both sides of that topic a chance to phrase their, their, their uh, concerns or their support in a document. And then we have, we have digital documents. We can read them ourselves. It's not going to be on a recall. And I think this way removes the emotion and actually speaks to the facts of, or of their, uh, of their presentations on whether they're for or against um, the issue. I think it's more of an unbiased presentation to have it digitally done instead of in public where I'm going to say uh, the emotions can, can be amped up. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bachman. Could I ask Councillor Bachman or Councillor Halpin if they'd consider a hybrid of one and two? Uh, through you, Mayor Sloan. So just to be clear on that, you would like us to have a let's talk option and also have an open house of some kind in Port Stanley? At the culmination, perhaps we would do let's talk and then at the culmination an open house. Just a, just a thought, not, not, a, not a mandate, just a question. Um, I'm willing to, although I will add that I have some concern about whether that will be very inclusive to the people worried about their tax spending who are from those further out wards, Port Stanley being absolutely the far end. It makes sense for the people living in Port and there are more of them invested, but I can see that. But yes, if Councillor Bachman's willing, I'm willing. Thank you. Councillor Bachman, please. I would consider the option provided that the people who are uncomfortable and send in their comments through the digital format of the Let's Talk that either those comments are read at the meeting or posted somehow so people can, and I understand that, um, I mean by posted, I mean posted at the meeting, that it can be read by everyone at the meeting or at least have them read out loud so that the concerns are heard. Thank you, Councillor Halpin. And oh, sorry, Councillor Halpin. Councillor Watson, did you want to jump in there? Yes, thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I almost read that number three, but I guess there was a little bit of a wording there. I, I thought number three was almost a hybrid. It said provide a presentation to the public in person and or I, if that said and or we could run a hybrid. I, I think because there's some people that like to talk in public and be heard that way. And I know some other people want to hide behind a screen. I don't mean to put it that way, I guess, but they, they're more comfortable that way. So we have to give them both options, I think, to be a fair counsel. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Halpin. Thank you through you. Uh, my question uh, to Mr. Graves, uh, would it be typical if those letters and things were posted for them to be posted with anonymity or would they be posted with names and addresses and so forth? Mr. Graves, please. I think typically when someone posts, we know who's post, we get their information in terms of who they who they are. So we know it's a valid posting. I guess if you're gonna then take that and read it in a public meeting, you want an acknowledgement from them that this is gonna be taken to a public meeting. That would be my only comment there. Somehow that would have to be built into it. Good point. Councillor Halpin. Thank you. Three Mayor Sloan. Is that something that we can uh, make part of the feedback options, whether they're willing for it to be posted? 
Mr. Graves, please. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Parent to comment on that. So uh, the comment that I would make is that some of the information may, may be protected through MFIPA, so personal information, so email addresses, things like that. Um, with respect to, um, I'll give you the analogy, the direction that council gave with respect to the zoning bylaw, uh, first open house, uh, which is on Wednesday, on Wednesday evening, is that we would have a hybrid, so virtual and in person, and then it would be taped. And then that would be posted on Let's Talk Central Algon. So the presentation, people can go at it, uh, review it in, in their leisure and then provide written comment back that council could consider. So um, those comments wouldn't be open for public consumption, but they're open for council's consideration. Deputy Mayor Noble, please. It's through you, Mr. Mayor. I, I like what Mr. Perrin just presented. Thank you. Councilor Halpert, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, uh, Council, to Councilor Connors, uh, would you be willing to amend so that we provide, or, sorry, Councilor, I apologize. Um, I'm just looking straight across at the name, or the tags. Anyway, um, could we do an amended motion so that we uh, provide both options and that the people on Let's Talk have that opportunity to see what was said in the public meeting? Councilor Bachman. Oh, yes. I'd be in favor of that, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Perrin. I will wait for Ms. Leach. And thank you, Ms. Leach. Mayor Stoll, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Halpin, seconded by Councillor Bogman. That report ICS 1823 regarding Edward Street Stairs public consultation be received for information and that council direct staff to proceed with a combination of option one and two that would facilitate both in-person and virtual engagement opportunities. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. ICS 1923, traffic calming on East Road and Carlo Road. Did you wish to speak to this, Mr. Brooks, please? For you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, further to uh, the uh, last meeting of council, staff approached the County of Elgin regarding uh, uh, traffic calming, specifically on East Road and Carlo Roads. Um, the request being that single delineator posts were uh, to be installed along both county roads. Uh, the county was um, willing to entertain the, the delineator posts installation as a pilot project for 2023 um, to be able to evaluate its effectiveness. Uh, the one uh, caveat to the um, of approval would be on East Road where there's bike lanes. Uh, it was determined that uh, a single delineator post placed on East Road where the bike, bike lane is on center line could cause drivers to swerve to avoid that center um, delineator post and swerve into the bike lane. So where a bike lane would exist, uh, a set of three delineator posts would be required. Thank you. Questions or comments? Councillor Graham. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Brooks, when we were talking about these posts, you had quoted us two different quotes, one for $100 and then another set of delineators for $200. And uh, with fiscal responsibility in mind, can you tell me which ones you are proposing for uh, the traffic calming measures, please? Councillor, pardon me, Mr. Brooks, please. Uh, I'm proposing that uh, we reuse what we can. $200 is an estimate. Uh, most of that $200 will be taken up with staff time installing these uh, posts. Traffic um, control is required. Um, uh, it, it's uh, um, So I just took a shot in the dark at $200 per post. So for a set of three, assuming it was $600, uh, um, a single delineator post at $200. 
Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Councillor Graham, please. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm confused just because when you had given us those quotes, you said there were posts for $100 and posts for $200. So are you recommending that we buy the more expensive ones at $200 and that's why three of them cost $600 and four cost $800? Council, Mr. Brooks, please. Yeah, again, they're $200 per installation per post. So you got a set of three. $200 times three is six, 600. Four single delineator posts at $200 per piece, uh, $200 times four is 800. Follow up. Okay, okay. through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Brooks, can you just confirm, are you buying, are you proposing that you're buying the $100 posts then or the $200 posts? Staff will be purchasing, if required, the cheapest posts, uh, that are acceptable for installation. We won't be adding any additional um, information on the posts. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? I do have another question from Councillor Graham. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm concerned about the um, municipally owned section of Carlo Road where we're only posting two posts in that 400 meter stretch. Um, I'm pretty familiar with that stretch and it seems like from the end of the Legion down to where we were talking about the uh, beginning of the, or the boat launch parking lot, uh, that two posts are not really going to be a large deterrent to the ridiculous speeds that we saw on the raw data on here. Mr. Brooks. Uh, staff typically measure speeds in the 85th percentile. As you can see, staff um, measured speeds at the uh, <clears throat> extension of, <clears throat> excuse me, the extension of Smith Street and found the speeds to be 38 kilometers an hour in the 85th percentile. So um, there doesn't appear to be a huge speeding issue there. Uh, as well, there's perpendicular parking all the way along there, which uh, a delineator post could interfere with. We would expect people backing in and out of those parking spots to um, potentially hit that uh, delineator post. So Staff would be proposing uh, that we would install a delineator post just north of Erie Street. There's a small little area there where we believe we could post one delineator post. As well, we would post one just south of Erie Street where there's a little bit of room before you get to McAsphalt to um, provide a single post. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Councillor Graham? Yeah. I just think that we need more. I mean, I, I think I don't think that two is in that stretch of space all the way from the end of the Legion down. We need more. I mean, there's not much more that I can say other than I, I know that we need more there. Thank you. And in, 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 in staff's defense, maybe it's a it's a start with two. Um, we had zero, so we'll go to two and we can keep an eye on it if that's an option. Councillor Halpin. Thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. I had been going to suggest the same, that at least if we start with two now, we could always come back and review this later if we think there's more need. Okay, thank you. Councillor Graham, is that okay to proceed? My concern is that we're doing the study, right? So the speeding study, we're putting two posts in, we come back and do the speeding study again, see that it didn't make much of a difference. Is the rest of council going to be okay with putting more in to see if that actually makes a difference or not? Or are we going to be making, that's my concern that we're going to be making that determination that, oh, the delineators didn't really help. So what's the point of having them rather than saying, rather than the, the idea that we didn't use enough to delineators. And so it didn't curb the speeding. Mr. Brooks, please. I guess I would uh, ask what the, um, the purpose is, is we've measured the speeds now with no delineator posts. We're, I believe, two or three kilometers under the speed limit here. So how slow are we trying to slow the cars down? Um, you know, we could put uh, as many delineator posts as council wishes. Um, however, we're already seeing that the speeds are, are below the, the speed limit there. Councillor Graham. And my other concern is where the where the, the speeding study was done because there as you're driving down there there's a huge dip in the road there that everyone knows about so everyone stops there to go through that dip and it was I believe partially repaired at the beginning of the year uh, and the speed 
gauges or whatever you call it, the speed test was done right there, right before that. So people were already slowing down. It's when you hit that part that they take off and head down to the um, parking lot. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Uh, and I would suggest that uh, staff aren't proposing uh, delineator posts be installed in that location. We're uh, installing delineator posts further south, closer to the boat ramp. Thank you. Um, unless there's any difference, could I get a mover in a seconder, please? Deputy Mayor Noble, Councillor Halpin. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Noble, seconded by Councillor Halpin. That report, ICS 1923, regarding traffic calming, Carlo and East Roads, be received for information. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. The Director of Financial Services, request for tenders 2023 East Road multi-use pathway. This one is from Mr. Dooling. Is that that's for, for did you want to come on it, Mr. Brooks, please? You're getting a lot of airtime tonight. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, so East Road multi-use path. Um, staff would recommend the council accept the tender from robot contracting uh, in the amount of five hundred and ninety-nine thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars uh, plus applicable taxes for the construction of the East Road, East Road multi-use pathway. Uh, the pathway um, will be constructed on the west side of East Road from Little Creek Park north to the water tower and uh, will include the construction of a signalized crosswalk at uh, Little Creek Park. Uh, the 2023 capital budget uh, included $600,000 for this uh, project to be funded from development charges. Uh, the pricing that you see, the 599 includes $50,000 of contingency carrying costs. Uh, so staff is optimistic that uh, we will be uh, well under budget on this project. Thanks, Mr. Brooks. Questions or comments around the table? Seeing none, if I could get a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bachman, Deputy Mayor Noble. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Bogman, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that report DFS 1523 regarding request for tenders 2023-05 East Road multi-use pathway be received for information, and that Council accept the tender from Roebuck Contracting Limited for 2023-05 East Road multi-use pathway in the amount of $599,415 plus all applicable taxes. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is from the Director of Fire Rescue Services, Fire Chief, uh, FS0723. Chief, did you wish to speak to this, sir? Thank you, Dear Mayor. Uh, to you, Mayor, to Council, this report is in regards to the replacement of the Union Fire Station's Pump 21. It is reaching its generally accepted end of life at a, as a 20-year vehicle. In the report, you will see the efforts that the fire service has done over the last couple of years to decrease the insurance cost to residents across Central Elgin uh, and maintaining your apparatus, your frontline apparatus at a 20 year or less will also help maintain insurance rates where they currently sit. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Council, starting with Councillor Graham, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the chief. Um, chief, do we have, when, when we have a, um, a call, we, do we have an automatic two station response here in Central Elgin? Is that correct? Through you, chief. Mayor Sloan. You are correct. For structure, reported structure fires, we do. For any other reported fire, we do not. So if it's a grass fire, for example, it would be a single station response until the arrival of that first station or first officers on scene to determine whether or not additional resources may be required. But for reported structure fires, you are correct. Councilor Graham. Um, and how many, how many trucks, Chief, do we have between the two stations? For the Union Station, if the Union Station was to have a call, they have a pump, a rescue, and a tanker. The Port Stanley Station, 
uh, now has a pump, a rescue, and the aerial will also run for reported structure fires. Thanks, Councillor Graham. I have a question, or go ahead, Councillor Graham. Sorry, one final one. So any replacement truck, is will it fit in the current hall? To you, Mayor Sloan, measurements will have to be taken to accommodate the vehicle. There are vehicles out there that will accommodate uh, the current station. Thank you. A couple of questions for me, if you don't mind, Chief. Um, the tier year weight, that's because it's being ordered new. Is that correct? Approximately four, five years ago, there was a one-year build time for trucks. Um, COVID did not do us any favors. Uh, vehicle expectations nowadays, as you can see in the report, can be 36 to 42 months. And manufacturers have told me that that's their best at this point in time. In the recommendations, the recommendation that staff put forward was to go with a new stock vehicle as that's a vehicle that's generally run through the manufacturing line on a somewhat regular basis. The one of the other options was to go with a new custom truck where fire service sit down and actually design the specific size of the vehicle, the size of cabinets and those components would become a lot more expense. And basically in three or four years as equipment changes, those cabinets no longer fit what the original design was for. Thank you. Um, any consideration given to the Newport Stanley um, Fire Hall being closer to Union with respect to our needs in the future? Uh, to you, Mayor Sloan. There has been one of the largest concerns at this point in time is to the eastern end of the Union Station response. I have reports uh, that I can show you uh, the time for Union to leave their station to get to the eastern end or get to Sparta, the four corners of Sparta, can be anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes up to 19 minutes, depending upon the weather. The Port Stanley station, uh, because of the station location and the location where firefighters live, is generally four to upwards of nine minutes before we can get a truck rolling out of that station. So you now have to add that time on plus the time to get the trucks from the Port Stanley station down to the Union station, which would be another minute to two minutes. Thank you. Superior accreditation you talked about, which we're given, that's a savings for insurance. If you could just give me an idea about that, sir. Mayor Sloan, in the uh, background of the report, when uh, I was hired in 2021, uh, we reached out to fire underwriters and they did a hydrant location and hydrant flow um, assessment within central Elgin. And at that point in time, the insurance rates, we received a better grading for the Belmont area and the Port Stanley area. Uh, we then did a tanker accreditation shuttle, a tanker shuttle accreditation uh, in October of 2022 which we were successful at, and uh, which then reduced the insurance rates for those uh, properties as listed in the report uh, being certain distances from fire stations. Okay, thanks. Uh, Councillor Graham. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just Chief again. So our response times from Port Stanley to get to the east end reduce or increased because of the location because when we moved it from out of town to the current location it takes longer for the volunteer firefighters to get there and then get the truck on the road is that correct is that what i heard you are correct with the former station being located in we'll say downtown port stanley mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a number of firefighters lived prominently close to that and were able to respond to the station and get a truck moving within a minute or two Currently, where the residential, where the firefighters reside, it's taking upwards. The longest report that I have seen to date is nine to 10 minutes for a truck to roll from the first time that they are paged. Thank you. Councillor Graham, please. And sorry, just one final question, Chief, just to defer to you. So I, I think you and I had talked previously about, you know, sharing of trucks and what are 
alternatives were, is there any option there for kind of, you know, do we need six trucks for this that service area? And are there alternatives to share the resources? Chief, to you, Mayor Sloan. At this point in time, due to the station locations uh, and the distance it is to the Sparta proper, uh, I am 95% confident you would see the insurance rates for those within the Sparta proper increase because of the additional timeline for, our, for the Port Stanley station. I, one of the things that they would look at is our fire reports and our timelines are gonna show that the additional time service is going to be well above. Generally speaking, the insurance company looks at an eight minute response for to have trucks on scene uh, from an initial call. So as I mentioned earlier, we are uh, above that. Now, that being said, that's for a full-time station. So we are above that eight minute and rightly so because it's a volunteer department. But as we continue to grow those numbers, I would be somewhat concerned as to what the insurance company may say. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Chief. Do, do, do our uh, question, just uh, anecdotal, do our people pay more because they have a, fi a volunteer, still professional fire department versus a full-time fire department? You, Mayor Sloan, to be honest, I, I would be hesitant. I would suggest yes. Uh, as you find a lot of large industries, when they locate to a uh, an area. That's one of the recommendations that they do look for is a full-time fire service because of the speed in which they can, can respond. Thank you. Councillor Bachman, please. Um, just a side note. Um, in Belmont, we're quite happy with our, with our fire department and, and their response times, obviously they're right downtown. So it's the response times are, are really good. Um, as far as the residents go in the union area in Sparta, um, I would be cautious, I guess, to not support having another fire truck for the sake that um, other than cost, I'm more concerned about the response times when it comes to people's health and safety. Um, if my house is on fire and I live in Sparta, I want the quickest response time. If my child is choking, I want the quick, quickest response time. Um, and by by supporting um, the fire chief's recommendation, um, I I don't know how much, and I realize we're dealing with fiscal um, responsibilities here as well. But I I wouldn't be willing to risk a child's life or somebody's house. I appreciate that, Councillor Bachman, and I, I want to differentiate between the place where we store the truck, the truck which are used on approximately sixty seven percent of the calls, and the people who come to the house. So we have the best volunteer fire department in Ontario, if not Canada. I have no exception with that. And I think the chief does a fantastic job. What we're talking about is equipment and equipment that we have. We just built a fire hall for $7.3 million, which is 1.2 kilometers away from the current, uh, from, from the Union Station. I have all faith in the chief and his decisions, but I will continue to bring forward comments that I think are pertinent to how Central Elgin spends its money. The volunteer fire department are the first on scene 90% of the time. Of course, we see about what that costs and it's peanuts. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to be, you know, to overstate it, but I agree with you. I agree with you in the concept of how important they are to us. And chatting with the old, another fire chief, the former fire chief, Mr. Crocker on the weekend, I learned a lot about the situation. And I learned a lot about what we do and how sometimes uh, uh, jurisdictions that are near us don't participate with us for, for many reasons. And I made the mistake of saying professional versus volunteer fire department. I will not make that mistake again. We have a professional fire department. They're just not full-time. Councillor Halpin. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, if I may speak to sort of the specific nuances of Sparta. Uh, if you look out Sparta way, you'll find that there's a huge quantity of surviving historic houses. Uh, most of them are wood framed, many are balloon framed. Uh, there are homes that are fully wood sided. And it is my understanding from talking to my neighbors in Sparta that many of them, even at times when burn permits are possible, are fully ineligible to have them just because 
it's considered that if a fire were to start at one of these homes, it would get so quickly out of hand and could cause fires to spread to the homes beside. So I do feel that that's something we need to recognize when we talk about the risks to Sparta, is that it's not just about whether an individual in their truck can get there for a health issue. It is about getting the trucks to the site because when there is a fire, that fire is going to be catastrophic. And although I also agree that I'd like us to look at fiscal responsibility, we really cannot put a price on lives. Thank you, Councillor Halpin. Deputy Mayor Noble and then Councillor Graham. Thank you. Um, I think before we approve ordering a new fire truck, we should maybe make sure that the fire truck we're looking at that's possibly a stock unit will fit in the union fire hall. Chief. Through you, Mayor Sloan. Um, in May, I attended the Ontario Fire Chiefs Conference in Toronto, and I did have a look at a few different models that they did have. And that was one of the things that uh, we did talk to the manufacturers about if they could provide a vehicle that would fit within our stations. And they assured me that, yes, that would not be a problem. Uh, prior to my arriving here, there were a couple of the bay doors that were extended in height because of the issues as the newer apparatus were coming in, they were becoming taller. Thank you. I have Councillor Graham, then Councillor Halpin. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I just want to reiterate what one thing that the chief had said, that our response times are above uh, the requirements for response times. Um, is it an option, Chief, though, to look around, shop around, and see if there is a, a previously used uh, truck for us to purchase that would suit your needs? Chief? Through you, Mayor Sloan, there is that option, as was one of the options provided within the report. My personal concern, as your representative for the fire service, if someone is getting rid of disposing of a fairly new apparatus, my question is, is why are you getting rid of that new of an apparatus when it is a specialty vehicle? Because now we look at warranty issues, is there an engine issue, is there a pump issue, which by no means matches the amount of the a new vehicle. Uh, and then the other component being most likely the color scheme would not match, in which point then there would be a report coming to council to repaint it unless you wish to have a different uh, color scheme for one vehicle going down down the road. You may end up getting a a blue one, a yellow one, whatever the whatever the case may be. Councillor Graham. Just in follow up to that, um, well, Central Elegant's colors are blue and yellow, but <laughs> um, and with regards to your comment about you know why someone would be selling that truck, I think we might have experienced that in the past where we purchased a vehicle and uh, wasn't anything wrong with it, just that we had purchased, Central Elgin had purchased an incorrect vehicle for the services that we required. We tried to sell it or we were going to sell it. So I'm just saying that potentially that could be the case in some other municipality or county or city, et cetera. And maybe it would be an option to shop around a little bit first. And then if we can't find, or if we can't find something that's suitable, then we look at buying a new one as an option too. Thank you, Councillor Halpin is next and then Deputy Mayor Noble, thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, I had been going to make a motion here and if Deputy Mayor Noble would like to go first, that's fine by me. Sir. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Ray, is there an option for a demo? Through you, Mayor Sloan, there, there very likely is and uh, that would be one of the components that we would uh, look into as well. Uh, the demos generally just travel around North America, just obviously as a demonstrator to show the public. Uh, when you purchase it, you still are provided with full warranties and such. Thank you. Councillor Halpin, please. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, uh, there were some good points brought up here. So if I may, I'd like to move that we endorse the replacement by option two as recommended here, and that if it would make people feel more comfortable, we add to that motion that we require that the new device that's purchased be something calculated already to fit our bays. Um, Council, Deputy Mayor Noble, please. Can we add in the option for the demo? 
I'm, I'm going to defer to the, sorry, the chief should probably be helping us with this. Councillor Halpin, you, you first, please. Sorry, just you'd prefer, if possible, to see a demo of the truck prior to purchase? No, I purchased. Oh, purchase the demo. Well. Demo and used are synonymous in certain places, uh, Chief, so let's tread lightly here. And, and I mean that only because Councillor Graham brought up a previous purchase. Staff's recommendation would be to look at a demoed unit, preferably over a used unit. Um, and if I may just expand on that to Councillor Graham's component with uh, the, the vehicle in, in discussion. I would agree with you, specialty vehicles in that case, that may so be more, I would be more inclined to agree with you with a pump per se, uh, it would probably be difficult to find a good used pump. And again, I would be leery because of the issues that could, could be developed further down the road with that. But a demo unit, I, I would not have any issues with because it would be coming with a full warranty package. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Help. And demo, I'm just realizing short for demonstrator. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> right? Right, that's what Democrats Important for. nuances, Does thank you. Does the truck have leather guts? Anyway, <laughs> um, um, back to the car talk. Councillor Halpin, I apologize. Perfect, uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan, then to Deputy Mayor Noble. Yes, I'd be happy to amend to say either option to new purchase or demo purchase and fitting our bays. Sleet Uh, we had Councillor Bachman. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Halpin, seconded by Councillor Bachman. That report FS723 regarding replacement of Union Pump 21 be received for information. And further that Council endorse the replacement of Union Pump 21 by utilizing option two, replacing union pump 21 with a new stock fire apparatus or demo pump. And further that the size of the purchased vehicle be confirmed to correspond to the size of the current union fire station and further that council direct that the existing platform truck be retained. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Getting a new truck, Chief. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my notes here so I don't make another mistake. Bylaws. 2797, 5277, 5277 Quaker Road. Okay. Bylaw 2807, seasonal bylaw enforcement officers, please. Mover and a seconder. Thank you, Ms. Leach, as always, for explaining this. We're going to put the bylaws together, striking the first two. So it'll be a mover and a seconder for bylaw three, bylaw four, and bylaw five. If I could have a mover and a seconder, please, Councillor Halpin, Deputy Mayor Noble. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Halpin, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that bylaw 2807, 2808, and 2809 be read a first and second time. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. If I could get a mover and seconder for the third and final, please. Councillor Connors and Councillor Watson. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads moved by Councillor Connors, seconded by Councillor Watson, that bylaw 2807, 2808, and 2809 be read a third time and finally passed. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Moving on. Public notice. We don't have so motions and notice of motion our motion 
is number one is Turvey Park. Did you wish to speak to this, Councillor Connors? Oh, there it is. Yes. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor Sloan. Yes. So at uh, at our uh, town hall, this was one of the items that was brought up. I've uh, spoken briefly to uh, to staff about it, um, but basically what I'd like to do is investigate uh, what the pricing levels would be for a low level lighting in the park. Numerous conversations were had at the town hall about this. Um, you know, you don't want to put in great big floodlights there because then you're going to upset people. There's going to be shining into their into their houses, etc. But with a low level lighting, um, it would probably please the most of 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 the of the community. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. For you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councillor Connors, um, <clears throat> staff are happy to uh, report back uh, uh, on uh, pricing for lighting. Are there any specific requests uh, for lighting, uh, such as are we lighting along all of the pathways? Are there any additional amenities that uh, uh, you would wish to explore having lit? Mr. Connors, Councillor Connors. There's many people there that walk in the evening. Um, there's there's a, a hesitant, hesitant uh, the police are very hesitant to go in there with no lighting and they won't go in there without two, two officers anywhere anyways. So um, with the low level lighting, I don't know that it's gonna be lit up enough for police officers from that perspective, uh, but that's something we need to look at as well. Um, I think that uh, the low level lighting should go along the whole pathway and uh, into the park. Thanks, Councillor Connors. I think the staff have all the requisite information, sir. So one final comment uh, through you, Mayor Sloan, Mr. Brooks. So we talked about, I mean, obviously we can't just put in uh, solar lights in there because the people will, uh, well, they'll disappear, let's just say. So you're gonna be looking at, uh, putting something in place that's going to be hard to remove. I take it. Mr. Brooks. Yeah, that's correct. We'll uh, get some pricing on some different options for council to consider. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, taking this back to council, would bringing it back at budget time as an option be acceptable to council or would you like a, a report on this ahead of time? I think um, budget time would be okay. We're, we appreciate that you're busy and that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Over in seconder, please. You moved it, pardon me. <laughs> Councillor, oh, Councillor Halpin, second it. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Connors, seconded by Councillor Halpin, that staff be directed by council to investigate pricing for low level lighting for Turvey Park. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Connors. Number two, organizational review. Um, Councillor Graham, did you wish to speak to this? I would like to did make you, the pardon vote. Me. Sorry, just I believe you declared conflict on this. So did it, you? So the deputy mayor will have to manage it if you have a conflict. If you declared one, I think. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then. Pardon uh, me, Deputy Councilor Mayor. You're in charge. Councilor Graham, did you want to speak to this? Um, I would like to make the motion that the CAO be given direction from council to complete an organizational review by an independent HR consultant of council's choice to commence in July, 2023, and that any staff changes be de delayed until after the organizational review is completed. So I'm moving, um, moving that uh, motion forward. Councilor Bachman. Yeah, discussion. Um, I, I've had a long time to think about this. Um, got a few concerns, I guess, with this. Um, and it's mainly from, uh, I guess we're putting the cart before the horse idea. Uh, we have yet to finalize our strategic plan, which outlines and sets our council priorities and our direction, um, which this, in my opinion, should fall under. Um, I think it should be tabled to 24 with it being a budget item because we right now don't have 
$10,000 or more, and I'm suggesting it'll be more, um, just from my uh, phone calls that I made to a few people. Um, at this point, we've already spent $34,000 on consulting and legal fees. This is going to push us to the 50 and beyond, and that's not counting how much money we've spent on the, the, the strategic plan, which is yet to be finalized, which is going to be in the ten dollars to $40,000 range. Adding those two with this, we're pushing $100,000 on consultants and legal fees. And we're concerned about fiscal responsibility, and we're the ones wasting the money on consultants and legal fees, strictly speaking. Um, the operational review requires, and what from the information I've received, an extensive it's not just you know sitting down going, what's your job? What do you do? Yeah, we need you. We don't need you. It's looking at the organizational chart and looking at future plans, future directions, our current state, and gap analysis of where can we improve. Um, I think this should be actually tabled to the 24 and budget and be a budget item that we can work into and proceed through, you know, cautiously and and in a in a more strategic way, not to paraphrase the strategic plan that we still need to finalize. So that's my two cents. Councilor Graham. Uh, I don't think we're putting the, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, I don't think we're putting the cart in, uh, in front of the horse here because uh, there's a lot of things in the strategic plan that will not be covered. That's why the terms of reference are very specific. Uh, we have some attrition that is due in this coming 2023. We have some resignations that are recent. We have a change in population that we need to consider. Um, and so this is a very specific area. And when I contacted three HR departments, um, that I deal with corporately, uh, they gave me, they all gave me, actually one gave me a much lower uh, estimate than this, but they said it not above $10,000. So I think there is money there taking into consideration, you know, the attrition, the resignations, that there is money there that we can use. And if we're spending a little bit of money to save a lot of money, I think it's well within um, our capacity to do so. Mr. Graves. Thank you. I just want to, I have a, a number of comments, but I just want to uh, sort of begin with the strategic plan part of it. And through my lens, my experience, what I've done, I think that's absolutely crucial that that needs to be done first, that it would inform your organizational plan going forward. I'm guessing that out of a strategic plan, um, you'll be discussing opportunities that you want to pursue in the future. Um, maybe I'm just going to use, I'm kind of fictitious here, but for example, economic development opportunities, how you want to look at that through the municipality's lens, um, what you're doing with your, uh, your municipal infrastructure servicing in terms of how you might be able to, you know, go further with that and work with neighboring municipalities, which, is, which has implications for staffing. Um, and there are a number of things that would come out, goals and objectives uh, out of a strategic plan that would really help. Uh, hone in on a uh, comprehensive organizational review. Uh, and I know that uh, I've done a little bit of uh, trying to figure out where the strategic plan was and indeed it was initiated earlier in the year and then it was uh, it, it was deep six, but I, I would suggest that if you're going to invest any dollars at this point in time that you get underway, you also need a strategic plan to inform your budget in the fall. Uh, with our strategic plan, you're going to you're going to be all over the board uh, on your with your budget in the fall, and and you need to have that strategic plan in place. And time is actually running out to move forward on that. So, through my lens, I would strongly recommend that you consider uh, that strategic plan first. I have more comments about the specific motion, but I just wanted to table those initial thoughts first. I, I think it's a great opportunity to do the organizational review sooner than later. Um, just in our conversations tonight where we realized that uh, our finance department possibly has the, the, the information and the know-how to do the, uh, the water financial plan. So with an organizational review, that would give us more guidance and and a better understanding of the skill base that we we actually have in-house. And, and that's something that as a council, we don't have right now. So 
I think that's Sorry, good. Dr. Mayor, I want to interrupt. We never said that we have the expertise in-house to do that. I simply said, I'll look into it and get back to you. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm not trying to be bad here, but I never said I have the expertise for water waste water in my department yet. Thank I have you. faith. Thank you, Councilor Graham. Uh, just one kind of housekeeping thing. I believe though, if uh, the mayor and Councilor Helpin are still in the room when we're discussing this and a vote is called that their votes are negative. So they actually have to leave the room. Thank you. I'm going to speak to that since I'm up on all the procedural stuff. That is true in any case, except a case where pers a person has declared interest and is therefore sitting it out as a matter of ethics. Councilor Connors. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So this organizational review has come up and we've spoken about it in a, in, uh, in a number of cases. And now I've seen something from Archana uh, recently in the form of an email talking about strategic plan. We're talking now today more about strategic plan than we have in the last six months. So I don't know whether one has flushed the other one out or not, but I would suggest they could run in parallel. Councillor Graham. So just two questions. Uh, Mr. Graves, can you comment on Councillor Helpin? Is that correct? Just so that I'm clear, so that we know that they don't have to leave the room? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, through, through my lens, they declared they're not part of the dialogue. They've moved themselves from the table, so they're okay too. Okay. Um, I just want to make everyone aware as well, though, that I do believe that the county uh, did an organizational review before they did their strategic plan and nothing blew up there. Councilor Bachman. Um, once again, I'm looking at being fiscally responsible, um, saying we don't have, we haven't spent anything yet other than the $7,000 that the previous council spent on the survey. Um, we're dealing with uh, a position of a temporary CAO, and this is a, an area that I think our future CAO could fall under and provide a direction with as well. Um, looking at where to best spend our money, if we're going to look at where best to spend it, is in the strategic plan right now. And I'm not saying cancel the, you know, the review. I'm saying let's get our strategic plan in order. Let's put the emphasis on that. And what's wrong with spending the money and budgeting for it? Organizational review first. And we're not looking at all different areas for what with regards to what the strategic plan would be looking at. So again, I would like to uh, remind everyone that there is a move on the floor and just looking for a seconder at this point. So a seconder for Councilor Graham's motion. Councilor Connors, is everybody ready to vote? Discussion. Councilor Watson. Yes, through you, Deputy Mayor Noble. Uh, who came up with this estimated budget of $10,000? Because um, what are we going to do if it goes over that? Because I do want to be fiscally responsible here. Because um, it we've heard reports it could be a way more. So uh, I'm for it, but not if it's going to go over $10,000. Thank you. Councilor Graham. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, to Mr. W or sorry, Councilor Watson, uh, that was the rounded off estimate that three different HR companies uh, that I contacted gave me. And my understanding is that if we put out the RFP or the procurement through the procurement policy, they would come back to council with, you know, the three bids or however many bids. And then if it doesn't fall within the $10,000, we get to vote on it as we would in any other situation. Councilor Connors. So a question uh, through Mr. Chair to um, Mr. Graves. Um, well, would things like dredging of the harbor and um, allocating funds for recycling, would that all be part and parcel of the strategic plan? It would certainly, you, at, at the end of the day of your strategic plan, you would probably have, you know, 
18 to 24 goals that you would want to accomplish yourself as a council and in the next in your in your term of council where you see yourself going um and uh that would be backed up by action plans in terms of how you're going to get there so that's what you want to drill down to in, in a strategic plan so it could be dredging it could be a number of things um one of your strategic objectives could be to do an organizational review that would be a prime objective out of uh out of a strategic plan to do that um so i, I hope that answers. i do have a couple more comments i just want to make sure i so thank you for that through you, uh, Mr. Chair. So different councillors here have been asking me uh, over the course of the last few months, what do you want to see done on Ward 4? What do you think is necessary in Ward 4? And I deferred because I said, well, I'm going to have a town hall and we're going to talk about what we want to get done in, in Ward 4. Now that just happened. So now I have a better idea of what I want to get done in Ward 4. But up until the month of June, I didn't. So, Wendell, if I could just make a couple more comments, if you'll indulge me, relating to the motion itself that I, I think are, are, are kind of important. Um, first of all, I think someone brought up the point about, uh, you know, you're, you're in the process of recruiting a new CAO. Um, and there is a variety of skill set that that individual will bring to the table. We've seen some preliminary skill sets that bring different tools to the table. I think that the skill set of your CAO is also very much going to speak to what your organization would look and feel like in terms of what they offer and as you're setting up uh, yourselves for the future. So I think that's really key that uh, that you have regard for this future skill set. And obviously, if this is initiated right away, it'll be void of that. And yet you're going to have a pretty impactful document uh, that uh, is not uh, it's not going to be there. Um, I'm wondering if maybe Councillor Graham could help with, in the motion itself, it, it talks about um, that any staff changes be delayed. I'm not sure what she means by staff changes. Councillor Graham. And I believe uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I believe that was in consultation uh, with yourself. I don't remember actually adding that in, <laughs> to be honest with you. My, uh, my, notice of motion was about the organizational review it just seems though when we had talked about it um that we were talking about that there was some attrition that there were some resignations that we were looking at you know the, the hiring of a water person and that an organizational review i believe that you had said that to me uh, mr graves an organizational review would be uh done um or would it would be suited to have an organizational review when we're looking at the staff compliment. I believe that was the comment you made to me, and that's why it was included in the notice of motion when you had said that you thought an organizational review uh, was a good idea. Uh, I think it is a good idea following a strategic plan, and I'm going to be through my lens pretty firm on that because I think it really leads to municipality in, in terms of where you're going. I didn't know uh, because there, there are some staff changes on the horizon, and uh, and they would have to be considered in terms of uh, backfilling positions, et cetera. We have a number of, you know, we, when you think about our municipality, um, there are uh, positions that are defined and are required by the Municipal Act that have to be in place. There are positions, for example, that are um, qualified positions within our water wastewater system that um, in order to operate the system, they have to have certain qualifications to operate those systems. So um we have to have all of that uh have that in play so i just want to make sure that we're we're cognizant of uh those things uh moving forward so i, I don't disagree with a with an organization view all organizations do it i just think you need to have your strategic plan in place first are we good to call the vote or we want to continue discussions council connors so through you, Mr. Chair, after listening to what Mr. Graves has, has to say, uh, Councillor Graham, um, would we consider going out for uh, quotations on an organizational review with options and different pricing levels and have staff bring that back to uh, Council for approval one way or the other, rather than because it seems to be some people seem to be very sensitive to the price. I'm just wondering. Councilor Graham. 
sorry, uh, sorry, Councilor Connor said I'm not under, really understanding what you're asking. So, is an organizational review, um, Mr. Graves, is is it just one thing? It's you do one thing and and that's it, or is there different options that can be completed? I have not gone so far as to phone anybody and ask about pricing, uh, but my guess is you're going to be between. Twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars to do a proper organizational review for a thirty-six million dollar outfit like you have here, and the complexity of it. So, what does that mean to you? Like between twenty-five to do a proper organization? to do a proper organizational that, review? Yes. What does that mean? Well, uh, actually, when um, when this when I saw that this was first coming, uh, one recommendation I had was just to to ask that a proper terms of reference be developed for an organizational review, at least to start there. Um, but that that hasn't happened here, so I can't comment further. It, take, it's a, it needs to be a thoughtful process. It's a it's a it's a detailed process. It needs to be thoughtful and well thought out, uh, attached with the proper terms of reference. Councilor Graham, and uh, that was a discussion that uh, through you, Mr. Chair. That was a discussion that uh, Mr. Graves and I had. So uh, when I was speaking to other uh, CAOs in in municipalities and other HR companies, these are the terms of reference that they. Had advised that they um, included in their in theirs, and that again, uh, the county had done a um, an organizational review prior to doing their strategic plan. So it has been done in different municipalities and counties. It's not, you know, a a, a situation where it's never been done before. It's done regularly or done on an ongoing basis, as you can see by the the evidence of that. So again, I think that you know we're only looking at one specific area. We're not looking at, you know, strategic planning or we're not looking at, you know, a technology review or software review or equipment or, you know, what our, our vision is for the future of, you know, the entire municipality. This is just in those specific terms of reference. And, and when I uh, was discussing that with them, those were the three quotes that they were all under that amount of money. Seems like it's a cost effective. And if there's three areas, three different, um, HR companies that have given that and the municipalities have given that, then, you know, I don't see why we're, we're kind of hedging on that moving forward, because I think it is something that is needed currently and not in six months to a year. Yeah. Oh, Dwayne. I would just like to clarify that no quotations have been received and none, no quotations were attached to the public agenda for tonight's discussion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bachman. Um, well, I can tell you there's a lot of things I haven't understood in the past. Um, but when it comes to this, uh, once again, um, we're spending money. We don't, we we passed a 0% budget. Now we're spending money that wasn't in the budget. And we're 34000 into it for our consulting fees and going higher. It's We've only been here six months. Um, so I'm, once again, looking at this as a Let's put this off. I don't see a reason to rush. I can see this being a budgetary item that we put into the 24 budget and we can proceed with guidelines based on a thoughtful worked out strategic plan. Um, I, I think I'll say it again. The organizational review would be a good thing. We'll know what our, our staff is capable of. And if our, our uh, previous thought process that, uh, that we reached out to the finance department, there's possibility to save a lot of money there. And when I look at this, this is not a lot of money when we're looking at everything in a big picture. And it gives us the opportunity to understand um, more so what our staff is capable of. And it'll give us as council a better opportunity to know what we can do in house and, and get a, a much greater understanding of, of our capabilities. So um, I'll call the vote. Mr. Chair, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Graham, seconded by Councillor Connors, that the CAO be given direction from Council to complete an organizational review by an independent HR consultant of Council's choice to commence in July 2023, and that any staff changes be delayed until after the organizational review is completed, and that the terms of reference are the following. Audit of organizational structure and reporting lines, cross-jurisdictional comparison of constituency versus staffing needs, 
review of job descriptions, completion of employee staff interviews, completion of a new organizational structure model based on research and feedback from staff leadership and council, seeking of a final approval from council on a fiscally responsible report, and a budget estimate of $10,000. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Mayor Noble. Uh, if I could get a mover and a seconder to proceed. It. Sorry, Councillor Graham, do you have a? I do. Sorry, I uh, had forgot. Uh, I wanted one additional notice of motion that I had emailed out to all the councillors, um, the mayor and the deputy mayor. I was contacted by uh, the folks in Port Stanley that are doing the 200 uh, trees for 200 years on the berm. They advise that uh, they require approval to move forward so that they can hit their deadline of a uh, funding request. Otherwise, uh, they won't be able to apply for funding. So I would like to uh, put a notice of motion on uh, the agenda right now that council approve the, the project of the 200 trees for 200 years with no cost to the municipality of Central Elgin. Okay, so um, we have to vote on whether we will consider the motion because it involves us going forward. So do you have a seconder? This is voting on whether we'll consider the motion. Councillor Halpin, second. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Graham, seconded by Councillor Halpin, that a notice of motion be considered from the floor. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Graves. Councillor Graham. Now I'd like to make the motion that we approve the 200 trees for 200 years project with no cost for the Port Stanley berm for, with no cost to the municipality of Central Elegant. Can I have a seconder of the motion, please? Is there a seconder for the motion? Deputy Mayor Noble. Do we have like, is it, it's all picked out where the trees are going. That's all kind of planned in. I just wanted to verify. I didn't. Councilor Graham. So in the Harbor, uh, in the master plan or whatever, uh, there is that section in the Southeast corner. Um, and I'm there wanted to, they wanted to work with staff anyway, I believe, and, and have a committee to go forward and do that. So there is that specific area that was already laid out in the master plan that says where the trees would be going. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Graves has a comment, please, sir. Thank you. I just, uh, I think it's wonderful uh, donation and opportunity. I just wanted to remind council that it, when this came up, I think at the last meeting, uh, staff committed to bring back a report uh, to talk about it and how it fit into the Harbor plan. So we haven't had that opportunity yet that would come to the next meeting. Um, I don't know how that fits if you're approving it tonight without that information. Thank you for the information, Mr. Graves, Mr. or Councillor Watson. Yes, thank you, Mayor Sloan. Um, this, uh, with the Harbor Master Plan going forward, uh, these people are in a rush to get this funding, but they better slow down a little bit because it's going to take some time to work with us properly, I feel. Um, yeah, I, I'm not prepared to uh, pass this right away because uh, there's that berm was built up with material that is uh, uh, not environmentally friendly right now. So I just don't think it's the right time yet. They got to hold their horses. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions or comments from other councillors? Councillor Halpin, please. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I read the email the day that it came out, but could you just refresh us on the benefits of doing it now? Thank you, Councillor Halpin. Councillor Graham, please. They'd be able to seek their funding and under the deadline time is what they're looking at so that we could be able to move forward with that in the 2023-2024 years 
and that's the name of the project 200 because Central Elgin or Port Stanley, sorry, turns 200 years uh, next year. So 200 trees on the berm for 200 years. Councilor Halpern or Councilor Watson? Is it through you, Mayor Sloan? Uh, I'm all for them getting funding, but uh, do they have anywhere else where they could put these 200 trees right now? Councilor Graham? Uh, they're not they're not buying the trees right now. It's for the 2024 year. That's why it's 200 trees for 200 years. So it's just a matter of that they have to have they have to have their application in for the funding by, I believe, July. I can't remember the actual date, July 12th or something, maybe or July 15th. Um, and there is already on the master, like I had said, on the master plan, there is already a designated area for the trees that was already approved by previous council and the community. Um, so I'm not sure what the what the concern is of, of Councillor Watson, but um, yeah. Mr. Parent's going to speak, and then Mr. Councillor Watson. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just uh, maybe a point of clarification then from Councillor Graham, uh, with, specifically with respect to her uh, proposed uh, resolution that there be no cost to the municipality. So, uh, not knowing what the uh, the group is applying for, are they actually applying for labor uh, costs to plant these trees? Uh, to Mr. Uh, sorry, Councillor Watson's uh, point uh, that. Uh, property is governed by a risk management plan and a health and safety plan with respect to any work that gets conducted on it. So it's not a typical, we'll call greenfield site that you could have volunteers go out uh, and plant trees on just an agricultural property. There are uh, requirements for properly trained people with proper uh, uh, PPE uh, to be worn and uh, very frankly, stringent guidelines about how to plant trees or any, any work to be done on that property. Thank you. I have Councillor Graham, then Councillor Halpin. And uh, when they came to present through you, Mr. Chair, when they did come to present just on the heels of that, um, what Mr. Perrin is saying, um, they advised and confirmed with all of us when they were here that there would be no cost whatsoever to Central Elgin. So I believe that they wanted to partnership partner with staff anyway, so that they could have that knowledge and understand what the requirements are, but they have, they're applying for federal funding plus uh, local funding through the different service clubs. So there would be zero um, cost to Central Elgin. Thank you. Councillor Halpin, please. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. One of the things that most impressed me when this delegation came forward was the involvement of the Kettle Creek Environmental Grade 8 class. Um, if there are requirements about training, PPE, et cetera, uh, does that mean that probably if we go forward in this way, they will not be able to be involved in the tree planting as they had hoped to. I'll defer to uh, defer to Mr. Perrin, please. I would uh, use caution with allowing volunteers and especially uh, school-aged children to be working in that environment, knowing the level of contamination, the nature of the contamination of the site. It's capped now with a clean cap, but planting a tree, they will be into that cap if they plant it properly. Councillor Watson, did you have, I have you on my list. Did you want to speak to this? Thank you, Mayor Sloan. Uh, yeah, I tell them, get the funding, and uh, if they don't have a spot to put the trees, they can plant it at my place. I'll take all 200. Thanks. Councillor Watson, thank you. Any further comments? We need a seconder your, for your motion. I thought we did. Okay, thank you. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Graham, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that council approve the 200 trees for 200 years project at no cost to the municipality to be implemented per the Port Stanley Waterfront Master Plan. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. If I get a mover and a seconder now to proceed and move into closed session, please. Councillor Halpin, Deputy Mayor Noble.
Thank you, uh, Councillor Watson has just mentioned that in my turning of the pages, I have forgotten to mention one of our employees, um, Andrew Sliegers, who is an operations superintendent, has completed the Public Works Leadership Development Program through the Association of Ontario Road Supervisors. We thank Andrew for his uh, continued uh, interest and productivity here at Central Elgin, including taking my phone calls on occasion during snowy winter days. Our thanks to Andrew and thanks, Councillor Watson, for reminding me. litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board and personal matters about an identifiable individual including municipal or local board employees all those in favor opposed Uh, if I could get a mover and a seconder to adjourn closed session, return to open session, please. Deputy Mayor Noble, Councillor Watson. Mayor Sill, the motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Noble, seconded by Councillor Watson, that council adjourn from closed session and return to open session at 10.09 p.m. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. If I could get a mover and a seconder for CS2, Main Street Road Allowance. Um, can I get a mover and a seconder for Youth Cavell Boulevard Road Allowance, please? Councillor Watson, Deputy Mayor Noble. Mayor Still in the motion reads, moved by Councillor Watson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Noble, that closed session item CS2 regarding Edith Cavell, Cavell Boulevard road allowance be received for information and that staff proceed as directed by council. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. CS3, storm drainage. Can I get a mover and a seconder, please? Deputy Mayor Noble, Councillor Graham. Mayor Still in the motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Noble, seconded by Councillor Graham, that closed session item CS3 regarding storm drainage be received for information and that staff proceed as directed by Council. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And a uh, verbal update on the CAO, uh, CAO clerk recruitment, if I could get a mover and a seconder. Councillor Graham, Councillor Connors. Mayor Still in the motion reads, moved by Councillor Graham, seconded by Councillor Connors, that closed session item CS3 regarding CIO clerk recruitment be received for information and the staff proceed as directed by Council. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Mover and a seconder for the bylaw. Deputy Mayor Noble, Councillor Watson. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Deputy Mayor Noble, seconded by Councillor Watson, that bylaw 2806 be read a first and second time. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And a mover and a seconder for third time, Councillor Connors, Councillor Graham. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Connors, seconded by Councillor Graham, that bylaw 2806 be read a third time and finally passed. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. If I get a mover and a seconder for adjournment, please. Councillor Graham, Councillor Bachman. Mayor Sloan, the motion reads, moved by Councillor Graham, seconded by Councillor Bachman, that the regular meeting of council dated Monday, June 26, 2023, be adjourned at 10, 12 p.m. and that the next regular meeting of council be scheduled for Monday, July 17, 2023 at one o'clock p.m. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much for everyone joining at home.